Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Rocco. I want to talk to you tonight about buying beef in bulk. And um, I am going to try and lay it out uh, in kind of a general uh, format of, of how it works, how the process works. My hope is to enable you to make some informed decisions if this is something you're thinking about doing for your house, for yourself. Um, I'm not going to be vague, but I am going to be kind of general so you can apply this to your situation with what you're looking at, wherever you may be. Um, and then after I'm done, excuse me, my friend and colleague Ian is going to get uh, come up and get more specific about what we are doing here on the farm. Um, Again, maybe this is something that you've been thinking about or, uh, you know, maybe it came to you as an offer, but you're not quite sure how the whole thing works, which is perfectly fine. I just want to help you out with that, get you familiar with some terminology and uh, some things that you can expect, kind of educate you a little bit, and uh, that way you can make an informed decision for yourself. So, I'm going to jump right into it. So, when you're buying beef, more than likely what you're purchasing as far as the animal is concerned is a steer. Um, you know, the, the industry standard, let's say, is about 24 months, maybe 26 months or so, uh, at about 1,200 pounds. Uh, that is the live weight of the animal. I'm going to write some stuff down. This will help me keep track of it too. But for us in an uh, organic and a grass-fed and grass-finished, system. Let's compare apples to apples. So that's where we're going to go here. So let's do this. Live weight for grass fed because of a couple things and genetics and so on and so forth. But anyway, so more or less, we're going to go off about a, let's say a 950 pound steer. That is on the hoof. That's some terminology. It means it's a live animal. It's walking around. It weighs 950 pounds. Um, typically for us, you know, that it's going to be anywhere from, let's say 24, could be as much as 30 months. Oh, my writing's getting sloppy out there at the end. Sorry. Um, live weight, this animal's ready to go. And then it's us, up to us as the farmers to, uh, to determine that. And then we take it to get processed. Um, now, when that happens, uh, and this isn't really so much to inform you about the process of growing out beef or anything like that. Let's just stick, stick on point. So we've got an animal that's ready to go, and then we take it to the abattoir. It's the slaughterhouse. Uh, it's our intention, and we do a good job of making sure that when that animal gets there, it is there for um, as small, as little of amount amount of time as possible to minimize stress on us and the animal itself also, most especially the animal. So what they do is um, when the time comes, right? So you've got your live animal, weighs 950 pounds. So they're going to take him and uh, get rid of him they're going to kill him um, quickly, efficiently, clean. There is no suffering. Uh, these animals don't struggle with that process. It's instant is what I'm getting at. It's like turning off a light switch. It's instant. Um, and then what they do, so then they have that, that body, and then they take it and they, and they clean it or they dress it. Uh, technically that process, that's the slaughter or eviscerate. So what they're doing, they'll take that animal, they'll hang it up, and they'll remove the hide uh, and the intestines. And so one thing that's important to understand or to know about, so if we're at a live weight of 950 pounds, when that happens and they eviscerate the animal, it's going to lose about 65% to 
of that weight. So it's going to run it down to about 600 pounds or so. Now this part's important to understand. So they have that, um, they have that, that body, that carcass, and they hang it up on these rails and they put it into a big cooler. What's important to understand about that is that is known as the hanging weight. Sometimes you might hear it called on the rail. Um, that's the hanging weight of the animal. Again, it's gonna lose the, a lot from the live weight. So now we're looking at, let's say, 600 pounds or so. What's important for you to understand is that the hanging weight is how the butcher and in many cases the farmer charge. That's how the butcher charges whoever is buying it and how the farmer charges the customer. Um, it's a good, it's a good solid uh, way for them to know the weight and they keep good track of it so they know they put them in this big cooler again and um, they keep track of it and they know what's going on with it and they have a cut sheet ready to go. It's going to hang in the cooler from anywhere from 14 to maybe 20 days. There is something to be said for dry aging, um, but we're not really going to get into that tonight. And typically, it's, it's pretty rare that you would dry age an entire side of beef. Um, I say side too because they cut it in half. I meant to tell you that earlier. So they cut it in half to maximize airflow and whatnot. Um, but again, important to understand. So now we're at the hanging weight. And then beyond that, uh, what's gonna happen is, so after two weeks or so, like I say, they're gonna take it and they have a uh, cut sheet, which tells the butcher when they go to process or fabricate, fab fabricate or butcher the animal, what kind of steaks, what kind of roast, how big, how little, how much do you want for ground beef, how big your package is, so on and so forth. Um, I really don't want to get into butchery tonight. For one, I'm certainly, I don't, I have a lot to learn about it myself, um, but that is a whole other subject, that's a whole other history, it's a whole other thing, is how to butcher an animal. Um, that's not really what we're, what we're going for tonight. But what I do want you to know, there's two important things to understand about this next, next step. Number one, off this 600 pounds, again, you're going to lose about 65% or it's going to go down 65% from this original, from the hanging weight, not from the live weight, but from the hanging weight. Um, you know, again, on the live weight, a lot of that loss is skin, intestines, so on and so forth. Um, a lot of the loss from the hanging weight to being butchered, the end product is bone, um, some parts of the animal that you can't eat, uh, a lot of moisture as well gets wicked off and lost in the, in the cooler. So that's important to understand as well. So, uh, now we're out of the cooler, it's getting butchered, it's getting processed. Again, if we're about a 600 pound hanging weight after the 65%, that's gonna end up yielding about 390 pounds of product, of meat. Um, there's some things to be said in here about, including bones or whatnot, um, a lot of folks, I've seen bones kind of gain in popularity over the years. When I first started, some folks wanted them, but I think bone broth has really taken off and people are really into that. Even sometimes folks will want them for their dogs or whatnot. But anyway, um, again, just being kind of general, you will lose about 65%. You will, on, on these numbers, you will yield about a 390 pound uh, yield off of a whole steer. This is one whole animal. Here's another important thing to understand off this. Now,
I'm sorry for my sloppy handwriting. Okay, I do want you to get this, because this comes up a lot. Because of anatomy and biology and the way that it really works, again, not getting into butchery, do your own research, check it out, but this is more or less how it breaks down. Off this hanging weight and what you can expect, about a quarter of that are going to be steaks, a quarter of those are gonna be roasts, and about half of it gets ground up into ground meat or burger or whatnot. Um, I do wanna make this point clear. Don't, don't get upset when you get your meat and you don't have 400 pounds of ribeyes or 200 pounds of New York strips and 200 pounds of porterhouse. You know, this is just how the anatomy of the animal and the process breaks down. That's how that, that's how that works. But that is a big question that comes up. Um, so I do want to make that clear. Um, one big question I get that we get uh, when buying beef in bulk, uh, a lot of folks ask, well, gee whiz, what kind of freezer space am I looking at? What kind of freezer do I need? So you will have a good idea of what to expect depending on how much you buy, whole animal, half, maybe even a quarter, uh, whatever that turns out to be. And also your, you, you know, they know the hanging weight again, there's at least a two week window um, so you can get more of an idea and know what you have coming down the, the, the line. But I'm not saying you have two weeks to buy a freezer. This is what I'm getting at. You'll know the size of your animal. You can know generally what to expect. I think the number you may be looking for as far as cubic feet, which is how they rate freezers anyway, you're going to get about 30 pounds of frozen beef into one cubic foot, 25 to 30. The bigger and more oddly shaped the cuts are, you know, let's go more on the 25 pound per cubic foot side. But you can plan accordingly if you do need to get a freezer and plan on, uh, you know, about 30 pounds per cubic foot, depending on how much beef you're going to get. And then you can plan accordingly and pick up a freezer if you need to. Um, we're going to get into expense and cost here in a moment. I'm not even going to include a freezer in the cost. And I'm going to tell you why. I mean, if you don't already have a freezer and you end up getting one, I feel pretty confident that you're going to end up really enjoying it, really using it a lot and taking opportunities to when you find stuff uh, to preserve it and have that long term preservation in your own home. Um, I've never known anyone who regret getting, who has regret getting a freezer. I've never known that to happen. I think it folks more typically turns into, man, how'd I ever live without this thing? You know, one of those things. Um, this is just a quick little tangent, just cause I want y'all to know this. There are two basic types. There's a stand up freezer like a big open door, kind of like a refrigerator. Uh, and there's a chest freezer that has, um, uh, you know, th th that's down further. You kind of open it this way and you reach into it as opposed to it being more vertical and you open the, the, the doors open toward you. The stand up freezers are typically more expensive, but they're a lot more convenient. If you get a chest freezer and you end up getting a bunch of stuff and stuff gets put on the bottom and can be hard to do and hard to find and all that stuff. But that's just a quick little note. It's something to think about. I do think that stand up freezers are much more convenient and easy to use. Um, so that's something to consider. I would also tell you from personal experience that freezers die and they go out. Uh, or they can, but I've had one do it in the middle of summer, and it was a very unpleasant experience. Keep your freezer somewhere, keep an eye on your freezer. That's what I'm getting at. I don't want you to do what I had to do. Uh, and I'm not trying to discourage you, oh geez, freezers go out, you're telling me to get one. It's not like that. I bought an old one, blah, 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 it's a long story. 
Here's my point. Keep an eye on that freezer. Just check it. Just put your eyes on it. Make sure everything is good to go. Good to good to stay. Good to good to stay cold. Um, so let's just run through that again one time, real quick. Got your live animal. It goes to the abattoir. It goes to the slaughterhouse. Okay. It's walking around. That's its live weight. Sometimes you'll hear that called on the hoof. It weighs whatever it weighs. And then that animal gets slaughtered or eviscerated and they clean it and they take the live animal and now they have the carcass split into two pieces and they hang it. They hang it in a big cooler. They weigh that carcass. Again, that's how the butcher charges you and more often than not, that's how the farmer charges you. Um, and then it hangs again you know, let's call it 14 to 20 days. And then they take it down and they butcher it. Sometimes they'll call it fabricating or processing, but that's what butchery is. That's when they're getting into your cuts and things like that. Um, after that process, when you have your individual cuts of meat, they get packaged uh, into freezer safe bags and they get vacuum sealed, take all the air out. And then the butcher uh, who has just followed the cut sheet and made it and followed those instructions and fabricated the carcass into those pieces of meat, has them uh, vacuum sealed into, again, freeze uh, bags that can be frozen. And then they're going to take that, they keep it all nice and organized, cut sheet, your name, uh, number of the animal, weight, all that stuff. They keep it really well organized. They put it in a box. They put it in the freezer, and they're going to give it a couple days to go ahead and freeze thoroughly. So when you receive your meat and or go to get, or, or when you receive your meat or when you go to get it, you can expect frozen packages of your beef. Um, that's important to know too. So if you do have a freezer, uh, make sure it's up and running and good and cold in order to receive your beef. Um, now these, you know, the butcher, um, you know, if they had it the way they wanted, I hope, I, I hope they have it this way, but they're running a lot of animals. Let me get to my point. They're not a storage facility for your beef. Typically you've got about you know, you've got a week to go get it or to, or to have it delivered, whichever the case may be. Um, but do understand that as well. So, you know, hey, your animals are here. Here's the, here's the hanging weight. They went through the first process. Here's the hanging weight. You got about two weeks. Get ready. Okay. Two weeks go by, maybe three. Hey, your beef's ready, it's frozen, it's all ready to go, ready to go in your freezer and ready to be enjoyed. Um, again, just be prepared for that, for that process. So we've got the live animal, the hanging weight, butchered, frozen, ready to roll. Um, that is pretty general, but that's pretty accurate of how the process works. Again, I do want to reiterate you should expect a 65% off of from the live weight to the hanging weight, from the hanging weight to the actual amount of meat that you're going to receive. Okay, that's important to understand. And also expect a quarter of it to be steaks, a quarter of it to be roasts, and about half of it to be ground. Again, this is not super specific, but these are accurate things that I'm telling you because I want you to know what to expect. And now you know and you can make an informed decision. That's what I want you guys to know. Now, I'm going to talk philosophy for one quick hot second.
We've got the customer, the farmer, and the butcher. Um, I think that this is worth noting because I don't know that I've ever had a customer who didn't tell me how much they enjoyed, or at the very least, how it was a new experience for them to work directly with a farmer and a butcher. Um, no one person in this little trinity here can exist without the other one. I need the butcher. Um, you know, people ask a lot of times too, oh, well, can't you just butcher it, blah, blah, blah? And the answer is no. It's, um, we don't have the equipment, we don't have the skill set, we don't have the facilities, we don't, it's, it's illegal. There's all kinds of reasons why you don't want me to go kill and cut up your beef. Let's leave that to the professionals. But I can't go anywhere if I don't have a customer that says, hey, I want some beef. And we're all helping each other out in this little thing. And it's a lot closer knit too. Um, you know, you have the opportunity, I should say, to know where the animal is coming, coming from, who's fabricating the animal, who's making your food, who's growing it, who's cutting it, who's preparing it for you. And you have the ability as the customer to know those people and to know that process. And again, I'm telling you that because it's always been told to me that that had value. So I wanted to share it. And it's cool, you know, like we get to know our customers. We know we've got a, we've got a good relationship with our butcher. We know them, they know us. Uh, and if this is a new experience for you, I feel very confident in telling you, if you want to know more about where your animal is coming from, what's this like organic grass fed thing, uh, you know, what kind of rotational grazing are you doing? If you want to know more about the agricultural, like the farming side of it, any farmer I know who's doing this would be glad to have you come to their property, show you around. Um, you know, the, the, the butchers as well that, that we've worked with and the, that we've worked with and are working with really take the customers by the hand and say, this is the process of butchery. These are your primal cuts. This is where these steaks come from. This is how many you can expect, so on and so forth. Uh, I want to try and, you know, again, enable you and kind of break down some stuff for you so um, you feel more empowered. But, you know, I need the customer, I need a butcher, the butcher needs a customer, the butcher needs a farmer, we all need each other. If you can't grow a cow in your backyard, hey, no problem. We can do it for you. So really, I think it's worth noting again, a lot of this buying beef in bulk, you are to some degree entering into a partnership. And if it has value for you, great. If it doesn't, that's fine too. Um, but there is a, gr a good opportunity for you to know more about where your food's coming from, okay? Now, I'm going to run some quick numbers for you guys, and I want to be clear here. I'm not managing your personal grocery budget for your own house. I'm not doing any of that, but let's just bring this stuff home, and I'm going to use my own, uh, I'm going to use the terminology that I just used, that I just taught you, and we'll try and bring this thing full scale real quick. We'll bring it on home. The numbers I'm going to use here are, are, uh, are, are accurate. They're the going rate for uh, beef and steaks, and you know these prices are accurate. So here, let's just run through this real quick. So stick with me. So say you've got a 950 pound, I'm going to try real hard to write real nice, live weight animal, right? Uh, and again, let's say this, you know, let's say 26 months old. Um, ready to go, finished, grass finished, full, big, big brisket, big fat on the tail, ready to be harvested, okay? So this guy gets slaughtered, right? We went from 950 pounds, remember our 65%, 
So now we're hanging. Now we're hanging at 600 pounds, okay? Again, this is where the butcher charges. I've seen it as much as, um, uh, you know, $1.45, $1.50 a pound to butcher the, this hanging weight. Live weight, hanging weight, I've also seen it. So let's say anywhere from 50 cents to $1.50 a pound. That's a big fluctuation, but those are the numbers that I've seen. Um, also, just a quick thing about terminology. A lot of times they'll call this cut and wrap, okay? Um, there is a bill here to slaughter. Usually it's about $100 to slaughter the animal. And again, I don't want to write down numbers, but let's just say it's going to cost you a dollar a pound on the hanging weight to get the animal butchered. Uh, terminology, that they call that cut and wrap, too, because, you know, and wrap they wrap it up anyway you figure that out so we're at 600 pounds hanging weight now let's say you buy a steer from us at seven dollars a pound hanging weight okay this is a whole animal now you're going to run into 4200 is our price i know that's a big scary number stick with me uh, and we got more on that coming up here in a moment. So let's break this down a little bit further. So this is the hanging way. They take it out of the cooler. They butcher it. Now you're looking at about 390 pounds. I'm just going to call it actual meat. That's how I refer to it in my head. Uh, of, but what you can expect as a product, okay? So you just paid $7 a pound on this number. By the time you get down to $390, you're paying more like $10.75 per pound for grass-fed, grass-finished, organic, regenerative beef. Okay? I want to compare apples to apples here. Now, so you got 390 pounds coming to you, so a quarter of that going to be 97 pounds of steak, 97 pounds of roasts, about 195 pounds, sorry about my handwriting, pounds of ground beef, okay? So, that's what's coming your way on a whole animal. This is the price. So you got all this from us at ten seventy-five um, for all this meat. Again, it's about three hundred pound, three hundred ninety pounds. Okay. Let's do this. Let's break it down this way. Let's say you go to the store and you buy yourself a steak of this quality, you buy yourself some ground beef, you want some burgers, you want some tacos, whatever. Get yourself a roast, got some friends coming over, it's cold, it's winter time, you want to put something in the crock pot. Let's do it this way, all right? I want you to see this. So in our area, I just checked this stuff this morning. Um, steaks for this type of beef are going for about $19 a pound. Roasts are going $16 a pound. Ground beef's going for about $8.50 a pound. So, when you add up this poundage, we're looking at $1,800, $1,843 for steaks. We're about $1,500. For roasts and the uh, ground beef's coming in at just over sixteen hundred dollars. Okay, so this is the total for retail. You go into the store, waiting in line, dealing with oh, I got to figure out dinner, all that stuff because you don't have it waiting at home, right? And then the grand total of all that is over five thousand dollars, right? 
So between this, this number and this number, you know, you're saving $850. Now, that was just a kind of a quick and real-time rundown. I, again, I want to be clear. You figure it out for yourself, what you have available to you, what you're paying, blah, 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 all that stuff. But these numbers are pretty accurate. And between this savings and this kind of partnership, um, I hope that you see the reason of why buy beef in bulk. And I hope that you feel a little bit more empowered to know what to expect and what's happening throughout the whole process. Thanks. Do a quick intermission? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Excuse me. We're going to do a quick intermission. Ian's going to come on. He's going to get more specific about what we're doing here on our farm. And I uh, look forward to that. And when we're done, I think we're going to take some questions if you all have any. Thanks. Hope that helped.
Uh, hey, y'all. Um, Rocco talked to you in general about buying beef in bulk. Uh, now I'd like to talk to y'all a little more specific uh, about buying beef from us here at Living Web Farms. We have 25 steers that uh, we would like to make available to everybody. Um, and they're great cattle, and we're excited to offer them. Um, you know, I can tell you one thing that, you know, Rocco mentioned how nice it is to have a freezer full of beef. And, and I'm here to tell you, you know, as somebody who always has a freezer full of beef, once you have a freezer full of beef, you'll never go back. You'll never get beef from the grocery store ever again. Um, it is awesome. Uh, you know, talking a little more about our cattle here on Living Web Farms, uh, we have 25 steers. They're Mashona cattle. Mashona are a breed from, from Southern Africa. They're very well known for their heat tolerance, for their um, resistance to parasites, and their, their great genetics on, on grass. You know, so it's a breed that you can raise entirely on grass, and they're very suited to it. They, they fatten up real nice, and they're, they're also high-quality eating cattle as well. Uh, our cattle here on, on, on Living Webs, we manage them rotationally. So that means they're moving constantly. Three to six times a day they're moving. Um, you know, it's fresh grass all throughout the day. They're not stuck in some lot somewhere eating out of a trough, none of that. Um, our grass are 100% raised and finished. On, our beef are 100% raised and finished on grass. Uh, you know, a lot of times people will market grass-fed beef, grass-finished beef. And a lot of times what that means is that it's it's at some point, you know, it was raised eating some, some quantity of grain and then they finish it on grass. But, but our cattle are 100% all on grass. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's important to us because of what cattle does for our ecosystem on the farm. Um, it's, it's very important and it should be important to you because grass, finished beef, grass raised and finished beef is much healthier. Uh, there's lots of studies out there you know, you can Google them. There's, there's, there's quite a bit of literature about, about the health benefits of cattle that have been raised on grass. Um, we don't give them any antibiotics, no ivermectin. We don't deworm them or anything. Um, we, we follow national organic practices standards. Uh, so it, it's, it's very high quality. And, and another thing that's important to note is that, you know, we handle them super low stress you know they're very happy to see me when i come every you know several times throughout the day and i like to think the happiest time of their whole day is when i show up because i'm the guy with the grass so you know they're happy they're 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 living their best life out on a pasture eating grass doing what cattle are meant to do um they are our kind of our regenerative powerhouses you know they're very important to our farm ecosystem so um we cherish them and we'd like to keep always have some cattle on the farm. Now, Rocco talked about the partnership between, you know, the customer, the farmer, and the butcher. And, you know, I'm here to encourage you to, to partner with us. Um, so I kind of wanted to go into, you know, the different, you know, the different responsibilities from each person in, in, that, in that trifecta. Um, on our part, you know, uh, a lot of farmers, when you partner with them like this to buy beef, you know, they'll say, okay, I, I, I sent the beef to the slaughterhouse, you know, go deal with this butcher, fill out the cut sheet, pay him, make sure he gets paid. You know, we, we're really interested in cutting all that out. We want to make it as easy as we can for y'all. So we're going to pay the butcher. We're going to fill out the cut sheet. The cut sheet's going to be filled out, you know, how, how it's broken down and packaged. It's going to be packaged for a family of two. So if you're a family of four, just take out twice as many packages. Um, and we're going to email you all along the way and communicate uh, with you. Make sure that it's, it's very easy and very painless for you. Uh, on your part, the, the, you know, there, are, there are three things that we have to insist in the partnership uh, from y'all. One is you pay a deposit, $950. Um, that's going to reserve your half an animal, right? And then comes, come slaughter time, they're going to slaughter it, they're going to hang it. They're going to get that hanging weight, right? And, and, we're, and then we'll email you, and you have two weeks to pay us the, the balance, which is going to be the hanging weight, 
times $7 minus $950. That'll be the balance, right? So once you do that, at some point, two weeks after slaughter, uh, it's going to be available for pickup. They're going to butcher it. At that point, it's going to be, you need to pick it up from the butcher shop within five days. Uh, just like Rocco mentioned, um, you know, they're not a, a meat storage facility, so it's important that you get it within five days. Um, if you go to the website, and I'll show the link with that at the end, uh, that is all on there, like where the butcher shop is, all that stuff. Um, so those, it's really just those three things, you know, that's, that's it. And you'll have a freezer full of beef. You know, you say, oh man, I want 200 pounds of beef in my freezer. Well, if you're in the Asheville area, partner with us. I highly encourage it. Um, what to expect from that? You can expect half an animal for $7 a pound of hanging weight. The hanging weight will probably end up being between 250 and 300 pounds. You know, Rocco went over some numbers. That was for a whole animal. If you want to get two halves, I'm all for it. That sounds great. Um, you need a big freezer. Um, so the weight of each animal is going to vary, but you can expect to pay between $1,900 and $2,200. Uh, and, and for that, you're going to receive 170 to 210 pounds of beef. Like Rocco went over that the usual the usual breakdown of that is 25% steaks, 25% roasts, and 50% ground beef. Uh, that's going to require for half an animal between six and seven cubic feet of freezer space. That's enough beef for a person to eat a half pound of beef every day for a whole year. It's a lot of beef. <laughs> it's a lot of beef. Um, and once again, I want to reiterate. You know, Rocco went over this, but I want to reiterate it that the hanging weight is not the amount of beef you'll receive because of the way the slaughter process works. Uh, you know, we, when we pay the butcher, we're paying on the hanging weight, right? So that's what we have to charge for. Um, but generally, the amount of meat that you'll receive is about two thirds of the hanging weight, right? So that's where that 170 to 210 pounds of beef comes from. Um, yeah, and I, and I, I very much encourage y'all um, we have the link here that we will include. Um, anybody, right now we're offering half animals. You know, if you're interested in more like a quarter of an animal, you know, I would encourage you to find a friend. You know, find, find your, your other friend and, and y'all can split a half and, and fight over who gets the ribeyes and who gets the tongue and all that. You know, uh, I guess you'll find out who your true friends are then. Um, and, and I want to encourage people too, a lot of, you know, when I talk to a lot of people, they get most of the trepidation comes from the fact that they're going to end up, you know, you get, yeah, you get ground beef, you get steaks, you get roast. Everybody knows what to do with that. But then sometimes you'll get, you know, you'll get like a kidney or a liver or a tongue, you know, that, and people are a little put off by that. But I wouldn't, you know, I'm going to come out with some videos here pretty soon talking about, you know, how to cook offals and how to cook tongue and cheek. When I get a half a beef, that's the first thing that goes. That's the best part of the animal as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I very much uh, in encourage you to, to cook those parts of the animals and to be excited about it, not to be intimidated by it. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. You know, we, we would love to partner with y'all. Uh, we have some awesome grass-fed beef. Uh, head to our Barn to Door website and, uh, and reserve your half an animal today. What's that? Wanna, uh, oh yeah. Bring them up? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Now we're we're gonna answer some questions. So if y'all wanna ask us some questions, shoot away and we'll answer them to the best of our ability. Sure. Absolutely. How long from the the time of deposit to slaughter? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, the We have 25 head. They're going to be slaughtered on three different slaughter dates. That's all going to be included in the emails that we will share with you to make sure you are in the loop. Uh, the first slaughter date is in late October. And as Rocco went over, once the slaughter gets hung, it's going to it's going to uh, rest for two weeks, and then they're going to butcher and be able for pickup. So the first pickup and the first round of slaughters is going to be 
early November, early to mid-November. So deposit is so that's from now till November. The, yeah, absolutely. So we've got three dates mm -hmm. uh, late. Don't quote me on this. Uh, our slaughter dates are, I think, October 25th, November, mm -hmm. it's after Thanksgiving, 28th, before Christmas, December 12th. Yeah. Something like that. Those are our three dates. We're breaking it up into three so we're not bombarding the slaughterhouse with a bunch of animals. It also gives us time to work this stuff out. So the quicker you make a deposit from this moment, to those dates, the longer time period you have to uh, prepare. Yeah. And you can expect, again, uh, I think you just said this, but from those dates, and it's all on the, uh, on the website. It's all on Barn to Door. We uh, recently opened a Barn to Door website. All those details are there. It's a very easy website to use. Um, very easy and painless. Like I said, we're going to keep in touch with email and make it easy for you. Right. So we're... So long and short of it, we're slaughtering late fall, early winter from our date, which you will know from that date when your animal is there, you're going to have about, you know, um, 16 days or so to, until it's going to be uh, available. Yeah. And in that, in that 16 day period between, between, uh, you know, after it's slaughtered, that's when we'll have your hanging weight, and that's when we'll know the, the, the actual final price for, for each half. We can't know until then. There's no way of knowing. Is that the only other question? Uh, is, okay, so that's, that's, yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. Uh, pick up right now is going to be at the butcher shop. That's, that, all those details are in on the Barn to Door website. Uh, shipping is not available at this time. Um, you know, we, you know, we hope to have that in the future, but for this year, really all we can do is halves and picked up at the butcher shop. Yeah. Um, the butcher shops in Forest City, if you're in Western North Carolina, they're in Rutherford County. Do you want delivery? Um, we, the butcher shop works pretty close with some folks who, who deliver. Um, and we can make that information available too. You may not have time to run down there and get it, but they can, they can uh, get it delivered to you. We'll make that information available as well. Yeah. All right. Is that all for questions? Yep. All right. That's all the questions. Cool. Okay. Thanks, y'all. We okay. appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Um, so.